Hello everybody and welcome back to Gardens and Crystals with me, Wesley Peterson. And today I have a video about another one of my beautiful Hibiscus Rosa Sinensis. And that is this beautiful orange and yellow flowering plant in front of me here. This one I decided to buy because when I bought it, it had a huge big dark orange and light orange colored flower that looked kind of psychedelic. It was just so beautiful. And it was next to a lot of other plants that were just kind of the flat plain orange color. So it stood out to me and that flower was so beautiful. And I'm going to put pictures of it on the screen for you now so you can see it. Look at it here. Isn't that just absolutely gorgeous and huge? Now, these flowers that have come out recently, because I've had this plant now over a week, have come out a little bit smaller and they've become a little bit more yellow around the edge and then orange in the middle. And I'm going to bring them up closer to the camera so you can see them in a moment, but they're absolutely beautiful. This plant has beautiful shiny leaves. It's looking very healthy. There are a few different stems in here. There are new leaves coming out and I really, really love it. And when I bought this plant, my pink flowering Hibiscus Rosa Sinensis was still flowering and it produced two more beautiful big pink flowers. And I have some pictures now of that plant. That's this plant next to me here, which isn't flowering at the moment. Those larger flowers have disappeared and this plant is growing out a few more new small leaves on it but it's bare at the moment. So this video, I want to concentrate on this one with the flowers on it. But now I'm going to put some lovely pictures on the screen of this plant and this plant's flowers together, the pink and the orange. Look at this contrast together. Isn't it absolutely gorgeous? They look like sweets, all the candy you can eat. <laughs> They're absolutely wonderful. And that's why I decided to go ahead and get myself another one of these plants because this combination together, oh, imagine it when these plants get bigger and I can place them next to each other or a little bit further away from each other and see the contrast in those two colors. This is just two of the boundless, amazing colors there are to be found on these hibiscus plants. And showing you these two flowers together here is quite interesting as well because where I bought these plants, there were stems that had orange flowers and pink flowers on the same stems. And that was absolutely amazing. And they looked like these flowers together here, just on the same plant. That was amazing. And then I saw some yellow flowers with pink streaks going on in them. So there was something going on in the chemistry of the plant to get it to produce the different colored flowers on one plant absolutely amazing. So anyway, now before I get on and repot my plant into this terracotta pot in front of me here, I just want to bring it in so you can see these flowers that have come out now closer up and you can see the slight contrast in them between the ones you just saw on the pictures. So just look at these cute little flowers. Aren't they amazing? Frilly again, and five petals on the flowers, which these hibiscus rosa sinensis usually get. And this huge long stigma and stamens in the middle here. And then look at this lovely flower at the back here. Just as gorgeous, isn't it? So let's have a closer look at them. Now look at that, isn't it just gorgeous? Really, really beautiful. Closer up, there you go. And then we'll turn around and have a look at the other one here. There's the other one. Just as beautiful, bright, and so exquisite. I love these. Oh, I love these. I can just look at them all day long. Beautiful. And then these really dark leaves this plant has as well. Just gorgeous. So I'm just going to quickly get on with this pull up my sleeves and get my soil that I've already prepared, a gardening mix. I've just put a tiny amount of sand in there. There's biochar in there. 
and that is to help to keep nutrients in the soil, a little tiny bit of sand just to make sure the soil doesn't compact too much around the roots because they need to be able to breathe. This plant does like to stay moist and then just before it dries out you can water it again so it gets an even flow of moisture. That's the best way to keep this plant happy. If it dries out, it will crisp off and it will die back very, very quickly, especially when it's young and small because these are basically just cuttings. But when the plant gets established, so if you manage to keep your plant going for over a year, then it will do fine. It will have a bigger root system. It will be used to your environment and then it should start flushing out and growing really, really quickly. And as I told you in my previous video that I did of my pink flowering hibiscus rosa sinensis, they have growth hormones in them when you buy them like this. So they're always around the same size. This one is slightly bigger than these ones were when I bought them. They will stay like this for six months to a year and then they will start growing out and growing longer like a bush, like a normal hibiscus does. So it won't stay as a compact plant like this, but the flowers aren't affected in any way by these hormones in the plant stunting the growth. The amount of flowers is just as prolific and that is why this works well for these plants like this. So I'm going to put them in terracotta pots because I need to be able to keep them watered a lot but at the same time I don't want to bog them down or saturate them so that they can't breathe and so that they die back. So this is the best method for me. I can make sure that any water that runs out the bottom I can tip out of the tray at the bottom here or the saucer and then the water can evaporate out the sides, the top and the bottom and I know that the plant can breathe at the same time as keeping moisture. So I'm just going to repot this in fast forward and just remember to go back and see my other video with all the care tips and so forth about these hibiscus. There's a lot more information in that video than this video. So really make sure you go back and see that video. It's in fast forward mode behind me speaking over because I didn't have any sound in that video. So it's a little bit of a different take than this one. This time around I've remembered to put my microphone on so I don't have to fast forward all that but I'm going to fast forward now quickly while I put the soil in the pot and put my plant into place. The quickest and easiest way to do this, the easiest method, is put some soil in the bottom, put your pot with your plant in the new pot and then you can put the soil around the edge, compact it a little bit down, not too much. I don't mean press it down so it's completely hard. Just make sure that you have a, a level layer around the edge. Then you can pull up your plastic pot and then just place your plant in that hole and you don't have to fuss around trying to get around under your plant and rocking it around and disturbing the roots too much as you're trying to get the soil in under the leaves. So let me get on with this. So the moment I like when I get to put my hands in the soil and rearrange things and I think this is going to be really good and I'm hoping that when I put these plants outside in the summer they're going to take off and that they'll carry on producing me these lovely big flowers all over. So now I'm just feeling around the edge to see if I have enough soil around the plastic pot inside here and it feels like I have. And I just discovered another reason why it's a really good technique to put the plastic pot in before putting your soil in around your plant, a plant like this that has a lot of big leaves, especially around the bottom. And that is that it's very difficult to not trap all the lower leaves in the soil. And if you do that, obviously those leaves are going to rot out into the soil and they're still attached to the plant and that's not very good. So I can pull up the plant now, put it back in the hole and I know all the leaves will be laying on top. None of them will be stuck in and around under the soil. So I just want to lift up, get some of this soil out of my hatch tray here, put that to the side, clean up this a little bit, so now for the fun part of my inverted sandcastle technique. I hope that the soil is going to stay in place and let's just get this pulled out. So I need to discover again where the edge of the plastic pot is. I've got it. And then pull up. There we go. That was perfect. And I'm going to try to just show you closer up 
how perfect this inverted sand castle is so that when I pull this plant up, I'll be able to place it right into this pot. Let's have a look. So there you go. I hope you can see this. Now, I can't tip this up much more because otherwise I'm going to lose my inverted sand castle. <laughs> and I don't want to do that. But you can see the soil and the hole. So let me get my plant into this now. So before I do it, I actually need to just tip out the top soil here. I can see hanging. That's all gonna fall into the hole and make it difficult for me to get my plant down into the hole. So any excess soil around the top of the plastic pot, make sure you get rid of that first. Then you're gonna get the right level in the hole. So now, I'm ready to pull my plant up out of its plastic pot and it should have a lot of lovely roots in here. Oh, it's a bit tight actually. Squeeze the pot with a soft plastic. You can squeeze it to loosen the soil from around the edges and there we go. And wow, amazing roots. I'm sure you want to see these closer up. So here are all these amazing roots. So you can see this plant is ready to be planted into a newer, slightly bigger pot. Have a closer look. Very healthy and beautiful white roots on this plant. So I'm gonna remove this again. And now, put my plant on its tray. Turn the front of the pot around to face me, so I'm putting the plant the right way. Get rid of this. And which side do I want to be the front? I want this to be the front, I think. So, in with my plant, straight into the hole. Oh, that couldn't have just gone better than it did. So now, I can just make sure that the soil is up against the edges of the root ball. And that's basically it. So now I can turn my plant around so you can see the front. And look at that. Isn't it beautiful in its new terracotta pot? I'm so pleased about this. Quick and easy job. So now I have my two hibiscus and I really hope that my other plant here will be able to produce me some more flowers soon. And I'm really looking forward to being able to put these outside in my outdoor terrace garden area where they will get a slight amount of direct light and then they will be in shade but getting a lot of bright indirect light around them that they need to keep them healthy and they will get the summer humidity and they will really enjoy that and I think they will grow better outside during the summer because it's still very dry indoors with radiators and so forth on these plants dry out very quickly indoors they need to be sprayed over and in fact what I do now is when I go in and have a shower I take these two plants with me into the bathroom and I place them in there and then when I've had my shower it's a lovely tropical humid room for quite a while so these plants can stay in there and soak up all of that humidity around their leaves and they really really love that so that's a very good idea to help keep up the humidity the very best thing would be for you to keep a humidifier next to your plants while the air is dry indoors and then you can also spray them but spraying only lasts for a couple of seconds um, before it dries out and disappears so that's really not something that is long lasting beneficial for the plants when we spray our plants it's usually to remove dust the dust will drip off the leaves and so forth but for humidity it really doesn't do much for plants as I said, it doesn't last very long because the air around is dry anyway. So a steamy room after a shower is perfect because you will get that longer lasting effect so that these plants can absorb that humidity into their leaves and stems. Anyway, that's all I have for you for this video. As I said, I have my other Hibiscus Rosa Sinensis video, my pink plant that you can always go back and see for more care tips. This was another video to show you another colour of this beautiful plant. The original colour was a dark red colour and there are all sorts of patterns and colours that can be found now. I've seen peach colours, I've seen pink with pink, light pink and dark pink, light pink solid flowers, dark pink, um, 
yellow, solid yellow, mixed yellow, orange, mixed orange, psychedelic orange like mine. So many different colors that you should be able to find something to make you happy. So, all I have to say now is thank you very much once again for watching Gardens and Crystals with me, Wesley Peterson. Please remember to like, subscribe and hit the bell so you know when my next video will be coming up and I will see you again very, very soon. Goodbye.